Hi, you're watching Charterhouse TV. You may have seen our latest video where we introduced the Reef Factory brand to you. We promised a closer look at some of the products and we've set up this KH Keeper Plus. So let's take that closer look and we'll tell you how we found it. Some of you may have seen our most recent video highlighting a brand called Reef Factory. And in that video, we said that we would produce some videos giving you a closer look at some of their key products. And one of their key products, or one that jumped out to us, is the KH Keeper Plus. And also some of you got in touch and said that you wanted to see a video, a video with more detail. So this jumped out to us. We, it also gave us the opportunity to set one of these up at an aquarium, in an aquarium we have in our HQ in Hartford. And it would give us the chance to show you the features. Yeah, so key features, I guess, is a good point to start. Um, first of all, what is the KH Keeper? So we've seen this movement within the industry and the reef keeping side of things, certainly for automated KH testing, monitoring, whatever you want to call it. And the KH Keeper and the KH Keeper Plus are reef factories offering. Now, as I said, there's two models, KH Keeper, smaller form factor, slightly lower spec, but in turn a lower price point. And this, the KH Keeper Plus that we set up on our Lagoon Aquarium here, that's got a upgraded stepper motors and upgraded pH probes, now a double junction probe, which basically means it's quieter and it's more accurate. So when setting up one of these, it will play into the Reef Factory Reef Smart app. And that's something that we touched upon in our previous video. So if you haven't seen that, we'll put a link on the screen now. And it means that you get remote um, readings of your KH. And in turn, because it's part of the Reef Smart app, if you've got other products from Reef Factory there, particularly the dosing pump, you can automate your dosing based on that those KH readings. Um, the good thing is, is that that can be done A, from anywhere in the world and on the fly, and it can also be completely automated. So you can set up something that says, if my KH reading is too high or too low, adjust my dosing elements. That was very attractive to us, as, as Steve's already said, we wanted to set one up on an aquarium here, so we did it, a bit of real life testing. So I guess let's take a look and see how we found it. So me and Ryan took a well-earned afternoon off last week to set up this KH Keeper Plus on our Lagoon 50 aquarium. We've made a set up, uh, a set up series of videos on that aquarium and we'll put a link in the video now if you'd like to catch up on those. Um, and me and Ryan both took from the setup of this KH Keeper uh, Plus that it was easy, but by no means plug and play. Yeah, that's it. And I think that that's the feedback we've kind of heard, yeah. isn't it, from customers out there that, um, you know, there's maybe been some challenges in terms of calibration or in terms of how long it's taken. And by doing it in real life, we've kind of understand yeah. that. And like Steve said, it doesn't mean it's difficult, no. but I think if anyone's going to be purchasing a KH Keeper and actually from the other products we've seen, most kind of semi-complicated KH monitoring, is that you've got to expect some yeah, kind of, of investment. Time. You've got to put a little bit of time into their setup, otherwise you're not going to get what you need back. Yeah, exactly, exactly that. So, I mean, it, like Steve said, we took an afternoon and, you know, we're hobbyists and, you know, setting up a kind of fun, kind of quite forward-thinking bit of kit like this on your yeah. aquarium was by no means taxing, but it's not just take it out of the box, plug it in and get the results that you need. So the first thing that we had to do was obviously unbox the unit, very easy, well packaged, came with everything that you need and install the actual body of the unit, the pump heads pump and the heads. tubing. Yeah, on the tube. And this gave us a good opportunity as well to redo our board and put it on the board nice so it looks really good in the video. Um, one thing that I would say is that when you're setting this up make sure you read the instructions first i mean me and ryan were a little bit gung-ho thinking that we can do it all but definitely have a, little, a quick breeze over those and make sure you've got it all in your head before you do it yeah and the instructions are really concise and really clear um, it comes with a whole pad of them that's a page by page and also the support via yeah. the UK distributor or, or actually Refactory directly is there as well. So if you've read the instructions and there are any questions, you can reach out to us or those guys and you can sure, be sure that you're going to set it up in the right way. And like Steve said, in our childlike excitement, <laughs> yeah. we maybe kind of skipped that section, which we shouldn't have. And one of the key things that we kind of failed to do immediately was set up 
the product on the app, which yeah. I must say was one of the easiest. Um, yeah, as they go, I've had. you know, sometimes a lot of the headache is getting something assigned to an app or getting it to show, but this was a breeze. Yeah, that's it. We set up a temperature controller and a, uh, a level keeper, a level well. keeper with, alongside the cage And the keeper, dosing pumps as well. And, and the dosing pumps, just so that we could really experience um, that whole um, Reef Smart app yeah. kind of feature that it's all built into one application. And adding them all to the Wi-Fi was a complete breeze. So once we'd done that, we then found ourselves having read the instructions with <laughs> a cage keeper plus on the board yeah. with the it connected to the app and we could move on via the instructions to the next step yeah and the next step was to calibrate it yeah. and this is the this is the point where you really do need to take a little bit of time don't rush it make sure you get it right um a great thing with it is that you you get everything you need in there you get the scales um but you need to do it step by step so yeah. first of all you would calibrate the the pumps and then move on from there to the pH probe. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out that there's multiple points of calibration here that are all important to ensure that you get the right yeah. KH reading. So you've obviously got pumps that move water from your aquarium into the test vial and, and then return them, which actually, just noting there, you can return the test water to, yeah, your, to aquarium, your aquarium, which we weren't quite aware of whether we needed to have a waste chamber for that, but so we're, we're doing that. But... You test, you've obviously got to calibrate those pumps. You've got a pump that delivers the reagent, so that needs to be perfect. And obviously you've got a pH probe, which needs to be calibrated via two solutions, like yeah. Steve said, that comes with it. So there's four points of calibration that you must make sure are right yeah. to ensure that your test results it, are right. If any of that calibration's out slightly, then obviously your results are going to be wrong. So it's something that you really need to pay attention to. And I love the fact that within the pack, you also get a set of weighing scales yeah. so that you can make sure that the calibration is spot on. Yeah, and you know? I mean, I've had products before, admittedly not KH monitoring mm. equipment, but that you have to calibrate. And then your brain is telling you, is that calibrated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not 100% sure. And one feature of the um, Reef Smart app, which I really like, and is a feature of the setup really in the instructions, is once you've calibrated it, there is an option to test the accuracy. Yeah. So instead of going, I'm going to calibrate it again yeah. and hope it's right. Yeah, you calibrate it five times just to make sure that it's right. Yeah, you haven't <laughs> got to go through that process. And that's where the scales that Steve yeah. mentions comes from. You calibrate the... Um, one of the pumps for example and then you can test the accuracy it should give you an exact amount you can take that amount and put it on the scales and be make sure that it is absolutely perfect within, within reason it's very difficult to have uh, an amount of fluid in a container and to sort of eyeball it and try and work try out and where it is below the if you put that on the scale it. and it's right you know it's it's uh, correct it's correct yeah so we've done that and you know we could go through a step-by-step -step instructions, but we don't need to. Reef Factory got that covered, yeah. and the instructions are there. And you're not going to watch a video back. But it's just to give you an idea of what's involved. Once you've done that bit, you can then action a test, which yeah. is obviously the exciting part. Um, we did that. The first test took a little bit longer than we maybe thought it would. I reckon what 20 minutes? Yeah, about 20 minutes. Of 20 test. minutes or so, which actually. Maybe feels like a long time the first few times it's tested. Yeah, especially it's when watching you're watching it, it yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, which you all will do. You sit and watch the test. Once we've learned over the last seven or so days that once that is action in itself within the cabinet, it doesn't really matter how yeah. long it takes because you're getting a test result however often you want it. I think we're at the moment we're testing every hour. Yeah. But you can do that four, four hours, yeah. six, eight, whatever you want. Um, and the takeaway which the KH Keeper Plus model certainly suggests is, in my opinion, it is pretty quiet. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was saying to you before that when you're when that pump's running, I'd find it very hard that you could probably hear it over a skimmer or anything else. So it's it's really tolerable. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you don't you don't notice it. Yeah, and I know that um our Lagoon fifty is um a display aquarium in our click and collector. So we appreciate it's not maybe a, a as quiet a home environment mm. as some of these um systems will be running but like steve said with cabinet doors shut and other equipment on, yeah, it, i don't I'd, think you're gonna notice it'd be very difficult to hear it i think that's it yeah so anyway we we, we set up a test we sat there and watched it staring at it drinking tea <laughs> it gave us some results and they were probably giving us kh readings a little bit higher than we maybe thought the kh was yeah. in the system 
Yeah, for sure. We looked at it and we sort of looked at each other and then looked at it again and thought, is that right? Yeah, but that's and probably us. It is, and but it made, us, it made us then test via other test kits, manual test kits, which gave us a reasonably similar yeah. sort of test results. Gave so we thought, peace of mind that okay, it's probably yeah. right. And like I said, it was higher. I think the initial readings were just over nine um, and we probably thought that we were running a lower cage than that. But, you know, busy environment. We're probably not doing tests as often as we should and we are dosing. Um, so just a little bit higher. So then we entered a phase that we've heard customers talk about. Yeah. And we spoke to um, Refactory about this as well. And it's really what you're all going to find yourself in. And that's the confidence yeah. stage. So is that reading right? And like Steve said, you can kind of manually use a traditional test kit to convince yourself that that is right but we decided that what we'd do we'd leave it running we'd test every couple of hours and we'd see what was happening with the other product that we'd set up the refactory dosing pump dosing the amount of um foundation solution that we have been dosing yeah, previously. previous to having yeah. the kh keeper and what we found is actually the kh was ever so slightly creeping yeah. um, and i'll put the results on the screen yeah. now um and to convince ourselves that that was accurate again, we reduced the dosing manually on the dosing pump. And you know what? It started to it level slowly off. Slowly went down, yeah. And then we reduced it even more. And actually, it slowly became to trickle down back into our parameters where we wanted it between 8.5 and 9. Yeah. And a really cool feature of that is... Yes, you've got the ReSmart app that you can log in and look at from wherever you are in the world, really. But it's also a manual LED yeah, system. Yeah, it's great. So if you've got an open cabinet or, you you know, you can see it, it just gives you like a, a, a green. For, Traffic light system. Yeah, works, it's, yeah, it's within tolerance or uh, a red if it's not. So yeah. it's an easy way to just look over to your system and, and you know it's where you want it to be. Yeah, you'll have notifications, but you don't always have your phone on you. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, a nice little feature. Yeah, so that we found, you know, all of the guys here checking out the tank. I yeah. still read, still out yeah. of tolerance. And you know what? Eventually, a couple of days ago, it entered into a green light. We know we're in the zone that we want. And that's a giant tick box in... Right, now I've got confidence in this product that yeah. I'm adjusting a dosing based on my KH reading manually at this point, and the KH is reacting. Yeah. So then we started to dig into, and we're actually going to finalise this today, but we started to dig into, in my opinion, one of the key features of the Reef Smart app and where all KH monitoring, this brand or not, really come into their own. And that is something on the Reef Smart app called Actions. Yeah. So you can set up an action to react to your KH reading. So if, for example, your KH reading is higher than your parameter, your, your highest top level parameter that you want it to be, you can say, right, next dose of foundation elements, whatever liquids or powders you're using, reduce it by X percentage. Yeah. And then obviously it would test again, depending on how wide apart you've got your tests um, set up. And again, if it's then below, it can return to normal, or it can, if it's above, it can reduce yeah. it even more. And that's obviously the same for lower. If you've got a lower KH reading, increase it by X percentage. Yeah. It's a great way of keeping it stable and seeing, you know, looking back on the, the app and seeing, you know, the stable line. You know, yeah, you yeah. You're looking to possible. flatten that line, yeah. aren't you? And if you can just make those minor adjustments, you're not going to get swings. You're going to have stable KH, and we all know how important that is for a reef aquarium. And that's really where this comes into its own. So, yes, you've got the initial setup of your KH keeper. It might take you an afternoon. It might take you longer. It might take you a little less time. It's not unenjoyable, no. you know, if you've bought one and you've got well, a reef tank. We said when we were doing it and we were watching it do the test that we felt like scientists sitting there <laughs> and it was doing the test, you know, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah, it that's good. it. So I feel like, yes, you're going back to our original takeaway um, in the real life test environment of the product. Yes, it's not plug and play, but it's not unenjoyable. Yeah. And I, I can't help but feel like the key takeaway is that the investment of time to initially calibrate it and set it up onto the app and even onto your actions far outweighs the benefits yeah. of having testing every hour we've had it over the yeah. first few days. Um, I think now we're on every four hours or so. And then the action to flatten that line via a dosing pump, remove, you know, forgetting that, all the other equipment that you've got on that app yeah. really is... Um, when it's all working together, 
it's just going to keep your aquarium as stable as it can be. Yeah, and and I think that for the price, I think this um, is around seven hundred and fifty pounds. Seven hundred and fifty. We'll 60. put the prices on the screen now. The, again, if you're on a budget or um, if you've got um, you haven't got a lot of space and yeah, you want a the smaller space. unit, then uh, even cheaper, you know, five five hundred five hundred and fifty pounds. Yeah. Um, if if you want that stability, I think it's a fair price to pay. And I think that that's a takeaway for all KH monitoring, you know. Yeah. Is KH monitoring a thing that's here to stay? And actually, if this is anything to go by, the feedback that we've had from some other brands on the marketplace, I think it is. I think so, yeah. That's it. So, listen, if there's any other videos that you want us to, hire, a product, sorry, that you want us to highlight from the Reef Factory range and do a video on, let us know. As we mentioned, we've got the temp controller and we've got the level keeper and dosing pump set up on that aquarium. So just give us a shout, more than happy to do that. If not, I hope that this video highlighting the KH Keeper Plus and um, what we found when setting it up helps you decide whether one of these products is for you. Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. See ya.